بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یہ ہمارا جو زولوجی کا ابھی دو ہزار اکیس میں لیکچر زولوجی کی جابس آئی ہیں ان کی تیاری کریں گے تو یہ ہمارا ایف ایس سی فرسٹ ایئر کی بک میں سے ہے جو کہ اسی کوشچن میں نے بائیولوجی کی بک سے لیے ہیں اور باقی جو ٹوینٹی کوشچن ہیں وہ پی پی ایس سی کے پاسٹ پیپر سے لیے ہیں تو اس طرح ہماری بہت اچھی تیاری ہو جائے گی اگر ہم اس طرح کریں گے بالکل اسی پیٹرن پہ جیسے کہ ہم سے ٹیسٹ لیا جائے گا تو ہمارا پہلا کوشچن دیکھتے ہیں وہ کیا ہے دیر آر ڈیش نیچرلی اکرنگ ایلیمنٹس تو بک میں اس طرح ہے کہ ہنڈریڈس آف کیمیکل ریئیکشن آر انوالوڈ ان مینٹیننگ لائف آف ایون دا سمپلیسٹ آرگنیزم ان ویو آف دس اٹ از سم تھنگ اف آف اے سرپرائز ٹو فائنڈ دیٹ آف دا نائنٹی ٹو نیچرلی اکرنگ کیمیکل ایلیمنٹس اونلی سکسٹینز آر کامنلی یوزڈ ان فارمنگ دا کیمیکل کمپاؤنڈس فرام وچ لیونگ آرگنیزمز آر میڈ دی سکسٹین ایلیمنٹس اینڈ فیو ادرس وچ اکر ان اے پرٹیکولر آرگنیزم آر کالڈ بایو ایلیمنٹس تو یہ ہے نائنٹی ٹو نیکسٹ کوشچن جو ہے وہ ہے ان ہیومن باڈی اونلی سکس بایو ایلیمنٹس اکاؤنٹس فار ڈیش آف دا ٹوٹل ماس تو یہ ہے نائنٹی نائن پرسینٹ آف دا ٹوٹل ماس نیکسٹ کوشچن ہے پرسنٹیج کمپوزیشن آف آکسیجن بائی ماس آف ہیومن بینگ تو یہ ہے سکسٹی فائیو یہاں پہ ہم چارٹ میں ہم جو دوسری پرسنٹیج ہیں وہ بھی یاد رکھ سکتے ہیں ان میں سے کوئی بھی آ سکتی ہے تو ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ آکسیجن سکسٹی فائیو ہے کاربن ایٹین پرسنٹ ہے ہائیڈروجن ٹین نائٹروجن تھری کیلشیم ٹو اور فاسفورس ون پرسنٹ اور اسی طرح جو ریمیننگ ون پرسنٹ ہے اس میں اباؤٹ ون پرسنٹ پوٹیشیم زیرو پوائنٹ تھرٹی فائیو پرسینٹ سلفر زیرو پوائنٹ ٹوئنٹی فائیو پرسینٹ کلورین اینڈ زیرو پوائنٹ ففٹین پرسینٹ سوڈیم اینڈ زیرو پوائنٹ ففٹین پرسینٹ میگنیشیم زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو فائیو پرسینٹ آئرن اینڈ زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو زیرو فور پرسینٹ کاپر اور اسی طرح کاپر بھی ٹریس میں میگنیز بھی ٹریس میں اور زنک بھی آئرن بھی ٹریس اماؤنٹس میں موجود ہوتی ہیں نیکسٹ کوشچن ہے بائیولوجیکل آرگنائزیشن کین بی ڈیوائڈیڈ انٹو لیولس فرام بائیو سفیئر ٹو تو یہ ہے بائیو سفیئر ٹو سب اٹامک پارٹیکل ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ بائیو سفیئر سے شروع ہوتی جو کہ سب سے بڑا بڑی آرگنائزیشن ہے اور سب سے چھوٹی سب اٹامک پارٹیکلز ہیں جیسے پروٹونس ڈیوٹونس اور الیکٹرونس یہ لیولس ہم نے سارے یاد کرنے ہیں تاکہ ان میں سے کسی بھی قسم کا کوشچن آئے تو ہمیں آتا ہو تو ان کو اچھی طرح سے یاد کر لیجیے گا تو اس کا جو آنسر ہے وہ ہے سب اٹامک پارٹیکلس نیکسٹ جو کوشچن ہے بائیولوجیکل ورلڈ ہیز ٹائپس آف مالیکیولس تو بائیولوجیکل ورلڈ میں دو ٹائپس کے مالیکیولس ہوتے ہیں آرگینک اینڈ ان آرگینک آرگینک وہ ہوتا ہے وچ کنٹینس بوتھ کاربن اینڈ نائٹروجن اینڈ ان آرگینک ڈو ناٹ انکلوڈ کاربن اینڈ نائٹروجن ٹوگیدر ان اے مالیکیول نیکسٹ کوشچن ہے اے لارج ریجنل کمیونٹی ڈیٹرمائن بائی کلائمیٹ از بایوم اب بایوم کی ڈیفینیشن کیا ہے اے بایوم از اے لارج ریجنل کمیونٹی primarily determined by climate it has been found that the major type of plant determine the other kind of plants and animals these biomes have therefore been named after the types of major plants or major features of either ecosystem okay next question is first living organism originate about dash million years ago so here we can see that 3000 million years ago the first animal was born on the earth تو یہ ہے تھری تھاؤزنڈ اسی طرح ہم یہ جو ببلز ہیں اس طرح یہ گولڈن ایجز آف ایم فی بینز ریپٹائلز فشر یہ کب ہوئے کس پیریڈ میں ہوئے یہ ہم نے اچھی طرح سے یاد کر لینا ہے پروٹیریوز یہ پروٹیروزوئک ایرہ جو کہ ٹو تھاؤزنڈ ملین ایرز پہلے تھا اور اسی طرح پیلیزوئک ایرہ اس کے ڈیفرنٹ اس کے ہم نے لیولز بھی یاد کر رکھنے ہیں اور اس کے پیریڈز جو ہیں اور اس طرح میزوز ایک ایرہ کے بھی پیریڈز یاد رکھتے ہیں سینوز ایک ایرہ کے بھی نیکس جو کوسٹن ہے وہ ہے نیرلی ٹوئنٹی فائیو لیکس پیشیز آر نون ٹو سائنس اور مور دن ہاف آف دیز آر انسیکٹس تو ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ آدھے سے زیادہ انسیکٹ ہیں کتنے ہیں وہ ففٹی تری ففٹی تری پوائنٹ ون پرسنٹ تو ہم نے ان کی پرسنٹیج یاد رکھنی ہے انسیکٹس جو ہیں وہ ففٹی تری پوائ ویسکولر پلانٹ سیونٹین پوائنٹ سکس پرسنٹ ہے اسی طرح ان اور انسیکٹس کے علاوہ جو اینیولز ہیں وہ نائنٹین پوائنٹ نائن پرسنٹ ہے اور فنجائی الجی پروٹس وار پرو کیریوٹس یعنی کی یونی سیلر جو ہیں وہ نائن پوائنٹ فور پرسنٹ ہے اچھا ہم نے یہ یاد رکھنا ہے کہ اباؤٹ یہ ایک اندازہ ہے کہ تقریباً پانچ سے تیس ملین سپیشیز ٹوٹل ہیں زمین پر لیکن اس میں سے ابھی ہم نے صرف ٹو آئیڈنٹیفائی کیا ہے نیکسٹ جو کسن ہے ڈیش is a tentative explanation of observation تو اس کا انصر ہے hypothesis so 
इसको हमने पढ़ लेना कि साइंस इज अस्टमेटाइज नॉलेज लाइक अदर साइंस इज बायोलॉजिकल साइंस इज आल्सो हैव अट मैथड मैथडोलॉजी इट इज बेस्ड ऑन एक्सपेरिमेंटल इंक्वायरी इट ऑलवेज बिगिन विद चांस ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑब्जर्वेशन आर मेड विद फाइव सेंसेस विजन हियरिंग स्मेल टेस्ट एंड टच डिपेंडिंग अपॉन देयर फंक्शनल एबिलिटी ऑब्जर्वेशन कैन बोथ बी क्वालिटेटिव एंड क्वान्टिटेटिव क्वान्टिटेटिव ऑब्जर्वेशन हैव accuracy over qualitative as in the former variables are measurable and are recorded in terms of numbers an observer organizes observations into data form and gives a statement as per experience and background knowledge of the event this statement is a hypothesis which is a tentative explanation of observation okay next question tha डैश रीजनिंग मूव फ्राम जनरल टू स्पेसिफिक ये हम जानते हैं कि डिडक्टिव डिडक्टिव का मतलब होता है कम होना तो जनरल ब्रॉड टर्म है और स्पेसिफिक एक छोटी छोटी टर्म है तो बड़े से छोटे की तरफ जो है वो डिडक्टिव रीजनिंग और इसी तरह इंडक्टिव रीजनिंग जो है वो है स्पेसिफिक टू जनरल यानी छोटे से बड़े लेवल की तरफ ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन था नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जो हम करेंगे वो है डैश प्रोडक्टिव थ्योरी में सजेस्ट अ न्यू एंड डिफरेंट हाइपोथेसिस तो ये है आप प्रोडक्टिव थ्योरी जो कि न्यू हाइपोथेसिस को सजेस्ट करती है इसी तरह दूसरा क्वेश्चन हम देख लेते हैं कि डैश यूज्ड फॉर प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ मिल्क एंड मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स तो मिल्क को प्रोडक्ट मिल्क और मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स को प्रिजर्व करने के लिए हम यूज करते हैं पॉस्चराइजेशन तो ये किसने किया था लॉइस पास्टर ने तो इसकी इसी के नाम पे इस मेथड को पास्चराइजेशन रखा गया है तो हमने इसका नाम रखना है कि डिफरेंट टेक्निक्स ऑफ फूड प्रिजर्वेशन हैव बीन डेवलप्ड फॉर प्रोटेक्टिंग फूड फ्रॉम स्पाइलेज एंड फॉर इट्स यूज इन ट्रांसपोर्ट ओवर लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस विदाउट डैमेजिंग इट्स क्वालिटी वन ऑफ दीज इज पॉस्चराइजेशन डिवेलप्ड बाय लॉइस पास्टर इट इज बींग वाइडली यूज फॉर प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ मिल्क एंड मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है एड्स इज कास्ड बाय तो ये है एच आई वी द एडवांस इन बायोलॉजिकल साइंसिस हैव प्रोवाइडेड अस इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द कैजेटिव एजेंट ऑफ द डिजीजेस एंड देयर मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन फॉर एग्जांपल द एड्स यानी एक्वायर्ड इम्यूनो डेफिशिएंसी सिंड्रोम ये एड्स किसका एब्रिवेशन है ये क्वेश्चन आ चुका है पीपीएससी में तो हमने इसको ध्यान से याद रखना है कि ये एब्रिवेशन है एक्वायर्ड इम्यून डेफिशिएंसी सिंड्रोम और इसी तरह एच आई वी किसका एब्रिवेशन है ह्यूमन इम्यूनो डेफिशिएंसी वायरस एंड इट सेपरेट्स थ्रो फ्री सेक्शुअल कॉन्टेक्ट थ्रो ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन बाई यूजिंग कंटेमिनेटेड सरेंजेस और सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट देर फोर डॉक्टर्स एडवाइज अस टू टेक प्रिकॉशन ऑन दीज फ्रेंड सो दैट वी डू नॉट कंट्रेक्ट द डिजीज ओके नेक्स्ट जो क्वेश्चन था एडवर्ड जेनर फर्स्ट डिवेलप द टेक्निक ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन इन तो ये सेवनटीन Edward Jenner first developed the techniques of vaccination in 1796 cowpox pus is known as vecca from latin vecca mean cow from this word evolved the present term vaccination and vaccine you will uh, since then inoculation or vaccination is carried out to make the people immune from viral or bacterial epidemics or for some diseases the individuals are vaccinated in their early life to make them immune to those diseases okay vaccination ke teen naam humne yaad rakhne ke vaccination ya fir shots या फिर इनोकुलेशन ये तीनों नाम हमने याद रखने हैं ये हमसे पूछे जा सकते हैं नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है इट इज क्लेम्ड दैट डैश हैज बीन टोटली एलिमिनेटेड फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड बाय वैक्सीनेशन अब वैक्सीनेशन से क्या रिमूव हो चुका है तो इट इज क्लेम्ड दैट स्मॉल पॉक्स हैव बीन टोटली एलिमिनेटेड फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड बाय यूजिंग दिस मैथड वैक्सीनेशन साइंटिस्ट आर मेकिंग कंटिन्यूस एफर्ट टू डिवेलप वैक्सीन अगेंस्ट अदर डिजीज इवन वैक्सीन अगेंस्ट एड्स इज बींग एडमिनिस्ट्रेड इन ह्यूमन ऑन एक्सपेरिमेंटल बेसिस अभी मार्केट में नहीं आई लेकिन फिर भी अभी एक्सपेरिमेंटल बेसिस पे है एड्स की वैक्सीन और अभी तक ये लाइलाज बीमारी है तो इसका सही आंसर है स्मॉल पॉक्स जो है वो रिमूव हो चुकी है नेक्स्ट इन कैंसर रेडियोथेरापी एंड डैश आर आल्सो यूज्ड फॉर ट्रीटमेंट तो कैंसर में रेडियोथेरापी और कीमोथेरापी दोनों तरह से इलाज किया जाता है इफ अ पर्सन बिकम सिक विद डिजीज ही इज सब्जेक्टेड टू द एक्शन ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स विच कैन किल बैक्टीरिया हमने ये भी याद रखना है कि एंटीबायोटिक सिर्फ बैक्टीरिया को किल कर सकती हैं वो भी तब जबकि उन्होंने रेजिस्टेंट रेजिस्टेंस प्रोड्यूस ना किया अपने अंदर और ये वायरसेस का कुछ नहीं बिगाड़ सकती यानी उसमें काम नहीं आती वायरल डिजीजेस में अब कैंसर में रेडियोथेरापी और कीमोथेरापी दोनों यूज होते हैं अब रेडियोथेरापी क्या है द कैंसर पार्ट इज एक्सपोज टू शॉर्ट वेव रेडिएशन फ्रॉम द रेडियो एक्टिव मटीरियल रिपीटेडली एट रेगुलर इंटरवल्स और कीमोथेरापी में क्या है कीमोथेरापी कंसिस्ट ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रिंग सर्टन एंटी कैंसर केमिकल्स टू द पेशेंट्स एट रेगुलर इंटरवल्स दीज केमिकल्स में किल बोथ कैंसर एंड नॉर्मल सेल्स 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है इन डैश नॉर्मल जीन इज इंसर्टेड इन टू होस्ट बोन मैरो तो ये क्या है जीन थेरापी जीन थेरापी ऐसी टेक्निक है रिसेंटली अ न्यू टेक्निक हैज बीन डिवेलप्ड टू रिपेयर डिफेक्टिव जीन्स दिस कंसिस्ट ऑफ आइसोलेटिंग द नॉर्मल जीन एंड इंसर्टिंग इट इनटू द होस्ट थ्रू बोन मैरो सेल दिस इज कॉल्ड जीन थेरापी और टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर अचीविंग यूजेनिक एम्स इज क्लोनिंग यूजेनिक मतलब सिमिलर जेनेटिक मेकअप हो जिनका मतलब ढेर सारे ऑर्गेनिज्म का तो उसको कहते हैं यूजेनिक तो इसके लिए हम जो टेक्निक यूज करते हैं वो है क्लोनिंग क्लोनिंग है क्या इट इज अ टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर अचीविंग यूजेनिक एम्स अ क्लोन इज डिफाइंड एज अ सेल और इंडिविजुअल एंड आर इट्स ए सेक्शुअली प्रोड्यूस ऑफ स्प्रिंग आल मेंबर्स ऑफ अ क्लोन आर जेनेटिकली आइडेंटिकल एक्सेप्ट वेन अ म्यूटेशन अकर Generally, no normal animal reproduces naturally by cloning. Several insects and many plants do in some circumstances, whereas few do so regularly. Next, in Dutch, scientists succeeded in cloning a sheep in Scotland. So, in 1997, scientists in Scotland succeeded in in uh, cloning a sheep. So, पहली मर्तबा sheep की cloning की गई थी और उसका नाम Dolly रखा गया था. Other mammalian हमने नाम याद रखना है. ये important है. और कब? 1997 में और कहा स्कॉटलैंड में ये इंपॉर्टेंट है याद रखने के लिए सो इन दिस प्रोसीजर द न्यूक्लियस अच्छा ये इसमें होता क्या है कि फर्टिलाइज्ड एग से न्यूक्लियस को रिमूव कर दिया जाता है एंड न्यूक्लियस फ्रॉम अ सेल ऑफ अ फुली डेवलप्ड इंडिविजुअल इज इंसर्टेड इन स्पेस और उसकी जगह एक फुली डिवेलप इंडिविजुअल का न्यूक्लियस जो है वो इंसर्ट कर दिया जाता है दिस अल्टर्ड जाइगोट इज देन इम्प्लांटेड इन अटेबल वॉम वेयर इट कम्प्लीट इट्स डिवेलपमेंट द न्यू इंडिविजुअल फॉर्म इन दिस वे इज अटिकली आइडेंटिकल क्लोन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल न्यूक्लियस वॉज यूज दिस क्लोनिंग कुड मेक मल्टीपल कॉपीज ऑफ अ डिजायर्ड जीरो टाइप अच्छा दूसरी तरीके से भी क्लोनिंग uh, होती है वो क्या है कि एन अदर टाइप ऑफ क्लोनिंग इज द डिविजन ऑफ अ सिंगल एग और एम्ब्रियो इन टू वन और मोर सिपरिट एम्ब्रियो दिस इज द सेम प्रोसेस दैट नॉर्मली क्रिएट्स आइडेंटिकल टू इंट्स और ऑफ स्प्रिंग फ्रॉम दिस टाइप ऑफ क्लोनिंग जेनेटिकली आइडेंटिकल बट कैरी क्रोमोसोम फ्रॉम ईच ऑफ द टू पेरेंट्स दिस टाइप ऑफ क्लोनिंग हैज ऑलरेडी बीन यूज टू प्रोड्यूस जेनेटिकली आइडेंटिकल कैटल एंड अदर फॉर्म एनिमल्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन था ऑटोमोबाइल लीव हैवी मेटल इन द एटमोसफेयर वो कौन सी हैवी मेटल है जो कि ऑटोमोबाइल्स जो है वो एटमोसफेयर में लीव करती है तो वो है लेड हम देखते हैं कि इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन हैज डिवेलप्ड मैन काउंट्रीज स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग इट हैज एट द सेम टाइम डिस्ट्रॉइड आवर इन्वायरमेंट Tons of industrial waste and effluents in solid, liquid, or gas form are being injected into the environment by the industries. These effluents frequently contain sizable amount of certain very toxic, even carcinogenic materials. Now, carcinogenic means cancer-causing materials. Heavy metals like lead from automobiles. So, automobiles are releasing lead and chromium, which are tanneries. Meaning, the chromium that is produced by the chromium is released. Meaning, the chromium that is produced by the chromium is released. Meaning, the chromium that is produced by the chromium is released. Meaning, the chromium are playing havoc to human health environmental pollution has reached alarming level in some countries china is ki best example hai kyunki sabse zyada industries wahan pe hai to wahan pe uh, alarming level pe pollution pahunch chuka hai jo ki hamara hamsaya hai to industry ki wajah se grow to ho usne kiya hai lekin pollution mein hum uske barabar ke hissedar hain next jo question hai removal of environmental pollutants by living organism is called bio remediation बायो रेमिडिएशन इज द रिमूवल ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूटेंट्स बाय लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म सो बायोलॉजी हैज हेल्प्ड मैन काइंड इन अट्रैक्टिंग अटेंशन टू दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड द बायोलॉजिस्ट आर स्ट्राइविंग टू फाइंड द सॉल्यूशन टू सेट दिस एनवायरमेंट राइट व्हेट वेयर एवर इट हैज डिटेरिएटेड बायोलॉजिस्ट हैव ऑलरेडी आस्क्ड फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल इफ्लुएंट्स टू बी मेड ऑब्लिगेटरी Several ways of bio remediation, uh, removal or degradation of environmental pollutants or toxic materials by a living organism are also under investigation. For example, algae have been found to reduce pollution of heavy metals by bio absorption. Next dash is the study of chemical components and the chemical processes in living organisms. This is biochemistry. Biochemistry is the branch of biology which deals with the study of chemical components and the chemical processes in living organisms. A basic knowledge of biochemistry is essential for understanding anatomy and physiology because all of the structure of an organism have biochemical organization. For example, photosynthesis, respiration, digestion, muscle contraction can all be described in biochemical terms. All living things are made of certain chemical compounds which are generally classified as organic and inorganic. 
most important organic compounds in living organisms are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Among inorganic substances are water, carbon dioxide, acids, bases, and salts. Next is proteins in the mammalian cell are dash percent of the total cell weight. अगर हम एक सेल का टोटल वेट करें तो उसकी कितने परसेंट प्रोटीन होगी दिस इज दिस इज 18 परसेंट इसी तरह दूसरी परसेंटेज भी याद रखनी है इनमें से कोई भी एमसीक्यूज आ सकता है वाटर जो बैक्टीरियल सेल में 70 परसेंट है और मेमेलियन सेल में भी 70 परसेंट होता है प्रोटीन बैक्टीरियल सेल में 15 और मेमेलियन में 18 इसी तरह कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स बैक्टीरियल सेल में 3 परसेंट और मेमेलियन सेल में 4 परसेंट लिपिड्स बैक्टीरियल में टू और मेमेलियन में थ्री परसेंट डी एन ऑफ द बैक्टीरियल सेल एंड जीरो पॉइंट इन द मेमेलियन सेल आर एन ए इज सिक्स परसेंट इन द बैक्टीरियल सेल एंड मेमेलियन सेल हैव ओनली वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट आर एन ए ऑफ द टोटल सेल वेट अदर ऑर्गेनिक मालिक्यूल्स लाइक एंजाइम्स हॉर्मोन्स मेटाबोलाइट इन ऑर्गेनिक आइंस दीज आर वन परसेंट इन बोथ बोथ टाइप्स ऑफ सेल्स बैक्टीरियल एंड मेमेलियन All the chemical reactions taking place within a cell are collectively called metabolism. Metabolism. Uh, now metabolism can be divided into two processes: uh, catabolism and anabolism. What is uh, catabolism? Uh, when when uh, simpler substances are combined to form complex substances, this is called anabolism. And when um when a large molecule is broken down into simpler uh, molecules simpler ones this reaction is called catabolism or catabolic reactions next question is carbon is bivalent tetravalent trivalent so the right answer is tetravalent carbon can join four other four other atoms so carbon is the basic element of organic compounds due to its unique properties carbon occupies the central position in the skeleton of life carbon is tetravalent it can react with many other known elements forming covalent bonds now what is covalent bond covalent bond result when two or more atoms complete their electron shell by sharing electrons when an electron pair is shared between two atoms a single covalent bond results an example is the bond between two hydrogen atom to form a hydrogen molecule covalent bond stores large amount of energy uh, as compared to other types of bonds a peptide bond is uh c n so when uh, carbon uh, bonds with nitrogen covalently this is called peptide bond carbon combines commonly with oxygen hydrogen nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur combination with these and other elements contribute to the large variety of organic compounds carbon and hydrogen bond is the potential source of chemical energy for cellular activities similarly carbon and oxygen association and glycosidic linkage provide stability to the complex hydro carbohydrate molecule carbon combines with nitrogen and amino acid linkage to form peptide bonds and forms proteins which are very important due to their diversity in structure and functions Next question is immediate source of energy for cellular metabolism is ATP. Small molecules such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids uh, serve either as a source of energy or as subunits to build macromolecules. Some small molecules are so unstable that they are immediately broken down to release energy and the best example is ATP. Next question is percentage of water in brain cell is 95 90 uh, 75 85% so uh, the correct answer is 85% water is the medium of life it is the most abundant compound in all organism it varies from 65 to 89% in different organisms human tissues contain about 20% water in bone cells and 85% in brain cells almost all reactions of a cell occur in the presence of water it also takes part in many biochemical reactions such as hydrolysis of macromolecules it is also used as raw material in photosynthesis humne yaad ye rakhna hai ki bone cell mein 20% water hota hai jo kitni hard hai aur brain cell mein aur brain cell mein 85% next jo question hai द स्पेसिफिक हीट कैपेसिटी ऑफ वाटर इज वन वन पॉइंट फाइव और टू सो हम देखते हैं द करेक्ट आंसर इज वन वन पॉइंट जीरो वाटर हैज ग्रेट अबिलिटी ऑफ ऑब्जर्विंग हीट 
with minimum of change in its own temperature. The specific heat capacity of water, the number of calories required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water from 15 to 16 degree centigrade is 1.0. This is because much of the energy is used to break hydrogen bonds. Water thus works as temperature stabilizer for organism in the environment and hence protects living material against sudden thermal changes. Next question is, the specific heat of vaporization of water is, so correct answer is 574, 574 kilocalories uh, per kg. Water absorbs much heat as it changes from liquid to gas. Heat of vaporization is expressed as calories absorbed per gram vaporized. The specific heat of vaporization of water is 574 kilocalories per kg, which plays an important role in the regulation of heat produced by oxidation. It also provides cooling effect to plants when water is transpired or to animals when water is perspired. Evaporation of only 2 ml out of 1 liter of water lowers the temperature of the remaining 998 ml by 1 degree centigrade. Next question is, breakdown of large molecules into smaller ones neutralizing water molecule is called so, the right answer is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Carbohydrates occur abundantly in living organisms. They are found in all organisms and most in all parts of the cell. Cellulose of wood, cotton and paper, starch, present in cereals, root tubers, cane sugars and milk sugars are all examples of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates play both structural and functional roles. Simple carbohydrates are the main source of energy in cells. Some carbohydrates are the main constituents of cell walls in plants and microorganisms. The word carbohydrate literally means hydrated carbons. They are composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen is the same as in water. Their general formula is CxH2O y, where x is the whole number from 3 to many thousands, where y may be the same or different whole number. Chemically, carbohydrates are defined as polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones or complex substances, which on hydrolysis yield polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone subunits. Now, hydrolysis um, involves the breakdown of large molecule into smaller ones utilizing water molecule. I mean, uh, hydrolysis water ki presence mein hi hota hai. Sources of carbohydrates are green vegetables, green fruits, green plants. So, the sources of carbohydrates are green plants not fruits not vegetables these are the primary products of photosynthesis because photosynthesis ke bizari just jo carbohydrate banti hai wo green plants hi banate hain aur wahi pe store hoti hai to ye primary sources hain other compounds of plants are produced from carbohydrates by various chemical changes carbohydrates in cell combine with proteins and lipids and the resultant compounds are called glycoproteins and glycolipids respectively Glycoproteins and glycolipids have structural role in the extracellular matrix of animals and bacterial cell wall. Both these conjugated molecules are component of biological membranes. Next question is carbohydrates are also called sugar, saccharide, saccharin. None of these. Achha, ye yaad rakhne ki baat hai ki aksar PPSC mein uh, D jo option hota hai, wo none of these hota hai. Must. To uh, pure paper mein 100 mein se ek ya do MCQs aise hote hai, jinka ye None of these ही option होता है, बस एक ये दो ही होते हैं mostly. So यहाँ पे हमने ये ध्यान, ये याद रखना है ये बात. So the right answer is saccharides. Carbohydrates are also called saccharides, derived from Greek word saccharon meaning sugar, and are classified into three groups: monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Next is carbohydrates that cannot be hydrolyzed into simpler sugar are monosaccharides because they are very simple, khud hi simple hote these are simple sugars they are sweet in taste are easily soluble in water and cannot be hydrolyzed into simpler sugars chemically they are either polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones all carbon atoms in a monosaccharide except one have a hydroxyl group the remaining carbon atom is either a part of an aldehyde group or a keto group the sugar with aldehyde group is called aldo sugar and with keto is keto sugar these are indicated in the case of two Trios is sketched. So, we have seen that this is an aldehyde form and this is a keto form. Hai. Next question is Human blood normally contains dash percent glucose. So, in our blood, how much normal person has glucose? So, this is 0.08%. In free state, glucose is, is present in all fruits, being abundant in grapes, figs, and dates. Our blood normally contains 0.08% glucose. In combined form, it is found in many disaccharides and polysaccharides. Starch cellulose and glycogen yield glucose in complete hydrolysis. Glucose is naturally produced in green plants, which take carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil to synthesize glucose. 
so here is six molecules of carbon dioxide 12 of water light energy and chlorophyll uh, the result the products are carbohydrates water and oxygen as indicated in the equation energy is consumed in this process which is provided by sunlight this is why the process is called photosynthesis photo mean light synthesis mean banana it is north it is noteworthy that for the synthesis of 10 gram of molecule 7 uh, 717 0.6 kilocalories of solar energy is used. This energy is stored in the glucose molecules as chemical energy and becomes available in all organisms when it is oxidized in the body. The covalent bond between two monosaccharide is called uh, peptide glycosidic um, bond. So, right answer is glycosidic bond. <laughs> oligosaccharides are comparatively less sweet in taste and less soluble in water. On hydrolysis, oligosaccharides yield from 2 to 10 monosaccharides. They, the ones yielding 2 monosaccharides are known as disaccharides. Those yielding 3 are known as trisaccharides and so on. The covalent bond between 2 monosaccharides is called glycosidic bond. Physiologically, ये जो आ, ये जो पैराग्राफ यहाँ पे मैंने इमेज की सूरत में दिया है ये आपने यहाँ ये लाजमी याद करना क्योंकि यहाँ से कोई भी एमसी क्यूज बना के वो दे सकते हैं तो ये इसलिए मैंने ये लगाया है आपने इसको अच्छी तरह से याद रखना एक एक इमेज एक एक लाइन अच्छी तरह से याद रखनी है physiologically important disaccharides are maltose sucrose and lactose most familiar disaccharide is sucrose yani ki in sugar mein jo hota hai which on hydrolysis yields glucose and fructose both of which are reducing sugars its molecular formula is c12h22o11 so here is the structure of formula next question is starch gives dash color with iodine so starch gives blue color in with iodine the right answer is blue color. Polysaccharides are the most complex and the most abundant carbohydrates in nature. They are usually branched and tasteless. They are formed by several monosaccharides units linked by glycosidic bonds. Polysaccharides have high molecular weights and are only sparingly soluble in water. Some biologically important polysaccharides are starch, glycogen, cellulose, tet dextrin, agar, pectin and chitin. Starch dekhte hai, it is found in fruits, grains, seeds and tubers. It is the main source of carbohydrates for animals. On hydrolysis, it yields glucose molecules. Starches are of two types, amylose and amylopectin. Amylose starch have unbranched chains of glucose and are soluble in hot water. Amylopectin starch have branched chains and are insoluble in hot or cold water. Starch give blue color with iodine. Next question is Animal starch is so. This is glycogen. Glycogen also called animal starch. It is the chief form of carbohydrate stored in animal body. It is found abundantly in liver and muscles. Though found in all animal cells, it is insoluble in water and gives red color with iodine. It also yields glucose on hydrolysis. Next, cellulose gives dash color with iodine. So, cellulose gives no color with iodine. Uh, it is the most abundant carbohydrates in nature. Cotton is the pure form of cellulose. It is the main constituent of cell walls of plants and is highly insoluble in water. On hydrolysis, it also yields glucose molecules. It is not digested in the human digestive tract. In the herbivores, it is digested because of microorganisms, bacteria, yeasts, protozoa in their digestive tract. These microorganisms secrete an enzyme called cellulase for its digestion. Cellulose gives no color with iodine. So, next question is structural units of lipids are. So, this is fatty acids. The lipids are a heterogeneous group of compounds related to fatty acids. They are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents such as ether, alcohol, chloroform and benzene. Lipids include fats, oils, waxes, cholesterol and related compounds. Lipids as hydrophobic compounds are components of cellular membranes. Lipids are also used to store energy because of higher proportion of CH bonds and very low proportion of oxygen. Lipids are double the amount of Lipids store double the amount of energy as compared to the carbohydrates. Some lipids provide insulation against atmospheric heat and cold and also act as a waterproof material. Waxes in the exoskeleton of insects and cutin, an additional protective layer on the cuticle of epidermis of some plants' organs, for example, leaves, fruits, seeds, are some of the main examples. Lipids have been classified as acyl glycerols, waxes, phospholipids, sphingolipids, glycolipids, and terpenoid lipids including carotenoids and steroids. The structure of some of these lipids um, you will see in the next slide. So neutral lipids are 
So the right answer is acyl glycerols. Acyl glycerols are also called neutral lipids. Why? Let's see. Acyl glycerols are composed of glycerol and fatty acids. The most widely spread acyl glycerol is triacyl glycerol, also called triglycerides or neutral lipids. Chemically, acyl glycerols can be defined as esters of fatty acids and alcohol. An ester is a compound produced as a result of a chemical reaction of an alcohol with an acid and a water molecule is released as shown. Alcohol when uh, reacts with acetic acid, an ester is formed and water is released. As indicated by the dotted scale, OH is released from alcohol and H from an acid. H and OH combines and form a water molecule. Fatty acids are one of the most important components of triglycerides. Next question is, Triacyl glycerol is composed of so uh, fatty acids glycerol both A and B. So the right answer is C both A and B. Acyl glycerols are composed of glycerol and fatty acids. The most widely spread acyl glycerol is triacyl glycerol. So the next question is fats containing unsaturated fatty acids are liquid or solid or both A and B are at room temperature. So the right answer is Fats containing unsaturated fatty acids are usually liquid at room temperature and are um, reset to be oils. Fats containing saturated fatty acids are solids. Animal fats are solid at room temperature whereas, whereas most of the plant fats are liquids. Fats and oils are higher than water and have a specific gravity of about 0.8. They are not crystalline but some can be crystallized under specific conditions. Next question is phospholipids are derivatives of uh, phosphatidic acid, oleic acid, both and B. So the, let's see, um, phospholipids are derivatives of phosphatidic acid. So the right answer is A, which are composed of glycerol, fatty acids and phosphoric acid. Nitrogenous bases such as co choline, ethanol, amine and serine are important components of phospholipids. They are widespread in bacteria, animal and plant cells and are frequently associated with membranes. A uh, fast fatty dial choline is one of the common phospholipid. So here is the formula, structure formula of fast fatty acid and fast fatty dial choline, also called lecithin. Ye dono naam yaad rakhne hai. Fast fatty dial choline is also called lecithin, and this is phospholipid molecule. Fast fatty acid is composed of glycerol, two fatty acids. Um, and a phosphoric acid on C3 of glycerol. In phospholipid and nitrogenous space, choline is attached to phosphoric acid in phosphatidic acid. Next question is some insects also secrete phosphatidic acid, oleic acid, waxes. So the right answer is waxes. Waxes are widespread as protective coating on fruits and leaves. Some insects also secrete wax. Chemically, waxes are a mixture of long chain alkanes with odd number of carbo carbons ranging from C25 to C35 and alcohols, ketones and esters of long chain fatty acids. Waxes protect animal plants from water loss and abrasive damage. They also provide water barrier for insects, birds and animals such as sheep. Next question is rubber, keratinoids, steroids, terpenes are made up of. So the right answer is uh let's see uh terpenoids are a very large and important group of compounds which are made up of simple repeating units isoprenoid units this unit of bicondensation in different ways give rise to compounds such as rubber carotenoids steroids terpene lipids constitute major source of energy and play an important role in the structure of membranes of the cell and of organelles found in the cell they also provide insulation mechanical protection and protection from water loss and abrasive damage so and the right answer is terpenoids, steroids, terpenes and terpenoids. So next question is, most abundant organic compounds to be found in cells is proteins. Proteins are the most abundant organic compounds to be found in cells and comprises over 50% of the total dry weight. If we dry a cell, the weight of the cell will be 50% of the weight of the cell. They are present in all types of cells and in all parts of the cell. Next question is, almost all enzymes are proteins, carbohydrate, lipids. So the right answer is proteins. All enzymes are proteins, carbohydrate, lipids. Next question is, almost all enzymes are proteins, carbohydrate, lipids. So the right answer is proteins. All enzymes are proteins. Some uh, few, uh, with, the, with the exceptions of few, proteins perform many functions. They build many structures of the cell. All enzymes are proteins and in this way they control the whole metabolism of the cell. 
As hormones, protein regulate metabolic processes. Some proteins like hemoglobin work as carrier and transport specific substances such as oxygen, lipids, metalloids. Some proteins called antibodies defend the body against pathogens. Blood clotting proteins prevent the loss of blood from the body after an injury. Movement of organs and organisms and movement of chromosomes during anaphase of cell division are caused by proteins. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, the compounds containing carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. The number of amino acids varies from a few to 3000 or even more in different proteins. Next question is most of the proteins are made up of in dash types of amino acid so the answer is uh, let's see uh, what 10 20 or 30 about 170 types of amino acids have been found to occur in cells and tissues of these about 25 are constituents of proteins most of the proteins are however made of 20 types of amino acids so the right answer is b 20 next question is all amino acids have an amino group and a dash group so let's see uh, carboxyl carbon oxygen so let's uh, all the amino acids have an amino group and a carboxyl group so the right answer is a carboxyl carboxyl group attached to the same carbon atom also known as alpha carbon they have the general formula as c uh, C carboxyl group, amino group, H and R. R may be the hydrogen atom as in glycine or uh, CH3 as in an alanine or any other group. So amino acids mainly differ due to the type of or nature of R group. Amino acids are linked together to form polypeptide proteins. The amino group of one amino acid may react with the carboxyl group of another releasing a molecule of water. For example, glycine and an alanine may combine. Okay, next question is glyce. Glycyl alanine is formed when alanine and dash combined and one molecule of water is released. So, glycine, 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 alanine. Right answer is glycine A. Uh, let's see the linkage between the hydroxyl group of carboxyl group of one amino acid and the hydrogen of amino group of another amino acid release water and C and link to form a bond called peptide bond. The resultant compounds glycyl alanine has two amino acid subunits and is a dipeptide. A dipeptide has an amino group at one end and a carboxyl group at the other end of the molecule. So both reactive parts are again available for further peptide bonds to produce tripeptides, tetrapeptides and pentapeptides etc leading to polypeptide chains. So let's see peptide, here is peptide linkage formation of peptide bond glycine when react with alanine and uh, uh, glycine alanine a dipeptide is formed with peptide bond and water molecule is released. Next question is, in protein structure, there are dash levels of organization. So the right answer is two, three, four. Right answer is three. Let's see. Each protein has specific properties which are determined by a number and specific sequence of amino acid in a molecule and upon the shape which the molecule and assumes as the chain folds into its final compact form. There are four levels of organization which are described below. So the right answer is C, four. Four levels of organization of proteins. Next is Dash was the first scientist who determined the sequence of amino acid in a protein molecule. So the right answer is F. Sanger A. Primary structure. The primary structure comprises the number and sequence of amino acid in a protein molecule. F. Sanger was the first scientist who determined the sequence of amino acid in a protein molecule. After 10 years of careful work, he concluded that insulin is composed of 51 amino acids in two K chains. One of the chain and had 21 amino acid and the other had 30 amino acid and they were held together by disulfide bridges. Hemoglobin is composed of four chains, two alpha and two beta. Each alpha chain contains 141 amino acids while each beta chain contains 146 amino acids. The size of a protein molecule is determined by the type of amino acids and the number of amino acids comprising that particular protein molecule. Next question is hemoglobin is n dash protein. So in the uh, uh, so options are globular, fibrous, or circular. So uh, in the diagram we can see that hemoglobin is a globular protein. So the right answer is A. And keratin fiber is a fibrous protein. Ye bhi yaad rakhna hai Polypeptide chains in keratin, fibrous protein, and the hemoglo hemoglobin globular protein are held together to form respective functional proteins. Next is there are over 10 proteins and there are over dash proteins in human body known to us. So the right answer is 10,000 B. The option B is right. Now let's uh, now we know that there are over 10,000 proteins in the human body which are composed of unique and specific arrangement of 20 types of amino acid. 
the sequence is determined by the order of nucleotide in the DNA. The arrangement of amino acid in a protein molecule is highly specific for its proper functioning. If any amino acid is not in its normal place, the protein fails to carry on its normal functions. The best example is the sickle cell hemoglobin of human beings. In this case, only one amino acid in each, be in each beta chain out of the 574 amino acids do not occupy the normal place in the proteins. In fact, this particular amino acid is replaced by some other amino acid and the hemoglobin fails to carry any or sufficient oxygen, hence leading to death of the patient. Next question is, the helical structure of proteins is kept by the formation of dash bonds among amino acid molecules. So, uh, options are sulfide, hydrogen, both and B, none of these. So, let's see. Uh, second structure, the polypeptide chain in a protein molecule usually do not lie flat. They usually coil into helix or into a, some other regular configuration. One of the common second structure is the alpha helix. It involves a spiral formation of the basic polypeptide chain. The alpha helix is a very uniform geometric structure with 3.6 amino acids in each turn of the helix. The helical structure is kept by the formation of hydrogen bonds among amino acid molecule in successive turns of the spider. B-plated sheet is formed by folding back of the polypeptide. So the right answer is hydrogen bonds. B, B is the right answer. Next question is, tertiary structure of proteins is maintained by three types of bonds, ionic, hydrogen and sulfide, disulfide, both and B. None of these. So let's see. Usually, a polypeptide chain bends and folds upon itself, forming a globular protein, globular shape. This is the protein tertiary conformation. It is maintained by three types of bonds, namely ionic, hydrogen, and disulfide. So the right answer is B, disulfide. For example, in aqueous environment, the most stable tertiary conformation is that in which hydrophobic amino acids are buried inside, while the hydrophilic amino acids are on the surface of the molecule. Next question is, hemoglobin, the oxygen carrying protein of red blood cells ex exhibit dash structure. Uh, options are primary, secondary, tertiary, none of these. So let's see, in many highly complex proteins, polypeptide tertiary chains are aggregated and held together by hydrophobic interactions, hydrogen and ionic bond. This specific arrangement is quaternary structure. So the, writer is, so the right answer is D, none of these because uh, the uh, hemoglobin exhibit quaternary structure as we can see in the diagram. Next question is sickle fiber is an example of dash protein globular silk fiber. Globular fibrous both and we let's see uh, because of the complexity of structure and diversity in their function, it is very difficult to classify proteins in a single well-defined fashion. However, according to their structure, proteins are classified into fibrous protein and, and globular protein. The fibrous proteins consist of molecules having one or more polypeptide chains in the form of five fibrils. Second structure is most important in them. They are insoluble in aqueous media. They are non-crystalline and are elastic in nature. They perform structural role in cells and organisms. Examples are silk fibers. Uh, from silkworm and spider's web, myosin in muscle cells, fibrin of blood clot and keratin of nails and hair. So the right answer is fibrous. Silk fiber is an example of fibrous. Other example we have to remember. This way we myosin is the example of what type of protein. So the right is, answer is fibrous proteins. Next question is antibodies are example of dash proteins. So uh, these are uh, globular proteins are are spherical or elliptic or ellipsoidal due to multiple folding of polypeptide chains. Tertiary structure is most important in them. They are soluble in aqueous media such as salt solution, solution of acids or bases, or aqueous alcohol. They can be crystallized. They disorganize with changes in the physical and physiological environment. Examples are enzymes, antibodies, hormones, and hemoglobin. So the right answer is globular protein A. Next question is. Nucleic acids were first isolated in 1869 by F. Sanger, F. Mischer, both A and B. Uh, let's see, nucleic acids were, were first isolated in 1865 by F. Mischer from the nuclei of pus cells. Due to their isolation from nuclei and their acidic nature, they were named nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are of two types, deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA or ribonucleic acid or RNA. DNA occur in chromosomes in the nuclei of the cell and in much lesser amount in the mitochondria and chloroplast. RNA is present in the nucleus, nucleus in the ribosomes in the cytosol and in smaller amounts in other parts of the cell.
Next question is ATP is a nucleotide, nucleotide both and we none of these. So in this diagram we can see structural formula of ATP a nucleotide. ATP is a nucleotide so the right answer is B. Next is uh, each nucleotide is made up of dash subunits 1, 2, 3. Let's see. The nucleic acids are complex substances. They are polymers of units called nucleotides. And DNA is made up of deoxyribonucleotides while RNA is composed of ribonucleotides. Each nucleotide is made up of three subunits. So the right answer is C. Three subunits. A 5-carbon monosaccharide, a pentose sugar, a nitrogen-containing base and a phosphoric acid. Pentose sugar in ribonucleotide is ribose while in deoxyribonucleotide is deoxyribose. Nitrogenous bases are of two types, single-ringed pyrimidines and double-ringed purines. Pyrimidine are cytosine, uh, thiamine and uracil. Purines are adenine and guanine. Phosphoric acid has the ability to develop eastern linkage with OH group of pentose sugar. In a typical nucleotide, the nitrogenous base is attached to position 1 of pentose sugar, while phosphoric acid is attached to carbon at position 5 of pentose sugar. Next question is energy currency of the cell is ADP, AMP, ADP or ATP. None of these. So let's see the compound formed by a combination of a base and a pentose sugar is called nucleoside. A nucleoside and a phosphoric acid combine to form a nucleotide. Each nucleotide of RNA contains ribose sugar, whereas sugar in each nucleotide of DNA is deoxyribose. One oxygen removal from OH group at carbon number two. ATP is also an important nucleus, nucleotide used as an energy currency by the cell. The energy currency of the cell is ATP. Next question is heredity material is RNA, DNA or ADP, none of these. Let's see, DNA is the heredity material, so the right answer is B. It controls the properties and potential activities of a cell. It is made up four kinds of nucleotides, namely D-adenosine monophosphate, D-guanosine monophosphate, D-cytidine monophosphate and D-thymidine monophosphate. These nucleotides are united with one another through phosphodiester linkage in a specific sequence to form long chains known as polynucleotide chains. Two nucleotides join together to form dinucleotide, whereas three join together to form trinucleotide. And nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide abbreviated as NAD is an example of dinucleotide. It is an important and coenzyme in several oxidation reduction reactions in the cell. Next is in dash, Erwin Charkov provided data about ratio of different bases in DNA molecule. 1950, 1951, 52. So the right answer is B, 1951. Let's see. In 1951, Erwin Charkov provided data about the ratio of different bases present in this molecule. This data suggests that adenine and thiamine are equal in ratio and so are guanine and cytosine are shown in the table. So in uh, we can see that. Sources of relative amounts of bases in DNA from various organisms on percentage basis. In man, adenine, in man, adenine is 30.9%, guanine is 19, thiamine is 29.4, and cytosine is 19.4. We can see guanine and cytosine are equal, and adenine, adenine and thiamine are equal in all these organisms. Next is Murice, Wilkins, and Rose linked. Franklin used the technique of DASH for the structure of DNA. Options are simple model, scale model, X-ray diffraction. Let's see what is the right answer. Murice, Wilkins and Rosaland Franklin used the technique of X-ray diffraction to determine the structure of DNA. So the right answer is X-ray diffraction C. All the data thus obtained strongly suggest that DNA is made up of two polynucleotide chains or strands. The two strands are coiled around each other in the form of a double helix. Coiling of two strands is opposite. They are coiled anti-parallel to each other. The two chains are held together by weak bonds. Hydrogen bonds, adenine is always opposite to thiamine and guanine and cytosine are opposite to each other. There are, there are two hydrogen bonds between A and T pair and three hydrogen bonds between G and C pair. The two strands are wound around each other so that there are 10 base pairs in each turn of about 34 angstrom units. One angstrom is equal to 100 millionth of a centimeter. Next, double helical structure of DNA is proposed by uh, Murice, Wilkins, Rosalind, Franklin, and Watson and Crick. So, uh, here in the diagram, we can see a double helical structure of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick. So, the right answer is C. A, a hypothetical sequence of nucleotide on the left side shows hydrogen bonding between the complementary bases. Next question is, amount of DNA in chicken's red blood cell is 
2.3 picogram, 2.4, 2.5 and all of these. Let's see, the amount of DNA is fixed for a particular species as it depends upon the number of chromosomes. The amount of DNA in germ cells, sperm and ova is one half of that of the somatic cell. Amount of DNA or nucleus in different types of cell of a chicken and a carp, fish carp is fish. Uh, so, red blood cell of the chicken contains 2.3 picogram of DNA. So, the right answer is A. And carp 3.3, liver cells contain 2.4 and in carp liver cell contains 3.3. Kidney cell of the chicken contain 2.4 percent and uh, kidney cell of the fish 3.3 percent. Sperm cell of the chicken is 1.3 and carp 1.6. Next question is, the unit of biological inheritance is nucleus, gene, chromosome, none of these. Let's see what is the right answer. Let's, uh, all the information for the structure and functioning of the cell is stored in DNA. For example, in the chromosome of bacterium E. coli, each of the paired strand of DNA contains about 5 million bases arranged in a particular linear order. The information in those bases is divided into units of several hundred bases each. Each unit is a, is a gene, a unit of biological inheritance. So the right answer is gene, option B. And the E. coli genome consists of 4, 6, 3, 9, 2 to 1 base pairs which code for at least 40 to 88 proteins. Dash is the first microbe uh, to have the genome completely sequenced. So right answer is Haemophilus influenza is the first microbe to have a genome completely sequenced and this was published in July 28, 1995. Next question is RNA is synthesized by DNA in a process known as translation, transcription, central dogma, none of these. So let's see, let's, uh, what is the right answer? Like DNA, uh, listen carefully, like DNA, RNA is a polymer of ribonucleotides. The RNA molecule occur as a single as a single strand which may be folded back on itself to give double helical characteristics. The nitrogen spaces from the usual complementary pairing, cytosine with guanine and uracil with adenine. RNA is synthesized by DNA in a process known as transcription. So the right answer is B, transcription. There are dash main types of RNAs, 2, 3, 4, none of these, uh, listen uh, carefully, 3 main types of RNA, so the right answer is B, uh, these types are messenger RNA, abbreviated as mRNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA are recognized. All these 3 types of RNAs are synthesized from DNA in the nucleus and then are moved out in the cytoplasm to perform their specific functions. Next is mRNA is about dash percent of the total RNA in the cell, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, none of these. Listen carefully, messenger RNA, this uh, paragraph may say those or other ways can MCQs be made, so you have to paragraph to listen to this paragraph. As the name indicates, it, it takes the genetic message from the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm to form particular proteins. Messenger RNA carries the genetic information from DNA to ribosomes where amino acids are arranged according to the information in messenger RNA to form specific protein molecules. This type of RNA consists of a single strand of variable length. Its length depends upon the size of the gene as well as the protein for which it is taking the message. For example, for a protein molecule of 1000 amino acid, messenger RNA will have the length of 3000 nucleotides. Messenger RNA is about 3 to 4 percent of the total RNA in the cell. So the right answer is 2, 3 to 4, B, 3 to 4 percent. Uh, transfer RNA comprises about dash of the cellular RNA, uh, the 10 to 13, 10 to 14, 10 to 20. Uh, let's uh, read it and listen carefully. It comprises, transfer RNA comprises about 10 to 20 percent of the right of the cellular DNA. So the right answer is C. Transfer RNA molecules are small, each with a chain length of 75 to 90 nucleotides. It transfers amino acids function It transfers amino acid molecules to the site where peptide chains are being synthesized. There is one specific transfer RNA for each amino acid, so the cell will have at least 20 kinds of transfer RNA molecules. Transfer RNA picks up amino acids and transfers them to ribosomes where they are linked to each other to form to proteins. Next is ribosomal RNA comprises about dash of the cellular RNA. 80%, 90%, 70%. Listen carefully, ribosomal RNA is the major portion of RNA in the cell major portion and may be up to 80% of the total RNA. So the right answer is A, 80%. It is strongly associated with the ribosomal protein where 40 to 50% of it is present. 
it acts as machinery for the synthesis of protein on the surface of the ribosomes the messenger rna and transfer rna molecule interact to translate the information from genes into a specific protein next question is most of the cellular secretions are dash in nature glycolipids glycoproteins carbohydrates or none of these you know, two different molecules belonging to different categories usually combine together to form conjugated molecules carbohydrates may combine with proteins to form glycoproteins or with lipids to form glycolipids most of the cellular secretions are glycoproteins in nature so the right answer is glycoproteins b both glycoproteins and glycolipids are integral structural uh, components of plasma membranes lipoproteins formed by combination of lipids and proteins are basic structural frameworks of all types of membranes in the cell next question is nucleic acids have special affinity for basic proteins lipids carbohydrates um, let's sort out what is the answer nucleic acids have speci special affinity for the basic proteins basic proteins not lipids not carbohydrates so the right answer is a proteins they are combined together to form nucleoproteins the nucleohistones are present in chromosomes these conjugated proteins are not only of structural but also are of functional significance they play an important role in regulation of gene expression next question is dash is the most abundant carbohydrate in nature so the right answer is cellulose is the most abundant carbohydrate in nature next question is uh, adenine and guanine are double ringed bases and are called purine pyrimidine cytosine none of these we know that ke jisme double ring hota hai wo pyrimidine hota hai aur jisme triple hota hai wo purine hota hai aur yahan se hum dekh bhi lete hain ki nitrogenous bases are of two times single ringed pyrimidine and a double ringed purine sorry abhi maine jo kaha wo galat tha hum yahan se dekh lete hain ki single ring jo hote hain wo pyrimidine hote hain aur double ring jo hote hain wo purine hote hain so the right answer is uh, purine a pyrimidine or cytosine and thymine next question is acha ye jo question hai ye abhi 2021 mein paper hua tha usme se liya hai ppsc ke past papers mein se isko isko aapne yaad rakhna hai kyunki ye questions aksar repeat hote hain aur isse milta julta question aayega to aapne is is uh, mcqs ke bare mein sari information yaad rakh leni hai florissant city is located in which country uh, so is map mein hum dekh sakte hain ki ye italy italy ka ek city hai florissant city a metropolitan city hai और सो द राइट आंसर इज ए फ्लोरिसेंस इटेलियन इसके ये नाम है कैपिटल ऑफ फेरेंस प्रोविंस एंड तो सेंट का रीजन सेंट्रल इटली द सिटी लोकेटेड अबाउट 145 माइल्स नॉर्थ वेस्ट ऑफ रोम इज सराउंडेड बाय जेंटली रोलिंग हिल्स दैट आर कवर्ड विद विलाज एंड फार्म्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ये भी हम पास्ट पेपर अगले जितने भी क्वेश्चन है ट्वेंटी रिमेनिंग जिस तरह आ, हमें सिलेबस दिया गया है कि एटी परसेंट जो है वो हमारे सब्जेक्ट रिलेटेड एमसी क्यूज होंगे और ट्वेंटी परसेंट जो है वो जनरल नॉलेज के तो ये जनरल नॉलेज के जो क्वेश्चन है ये मैंने पास्ट पेपर से लिए हैं तो आपने इनको याद रखना है अगर आप इस मेरे साथ साथ तैयारी करेंगे तो इनशाला आप कामयाब हो जाएंगे लेक्चर की सीट अपनी प्रिजर्व करने में सो so, ये क्वेश्चन है हु इज द करंट एम्बेसिडर ऑफ यूरोपियन यूनियन टू पाकिस्तान सो जो करंट है वो है कैमिनारा एंट्रोला कैमिनारा सो दर बी इज द राइट आंसर ये अभी 2022 में भी यही है सो so, हमने ये याद रखना है करंट ये चेंज हो, होंगी तो हमने क्या करना है इसके लिए न्यूज सुननी है इसके लिए न्यूज देखनी है ताकि हमें पता चले कि ये कौन कौन न्यू अपॉइंट हुआ है तो गैस कॉमनली नोन एज लाफिंग गैस इज सो द राइट आंसर इज नन ऑफ दीज कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नो मिथेन नो नाइट्रोजन नो Uh, so the right answer is nitrous oxide is common uh, also called laughing gas or happy gas due to kyu uh, kehlati hai ye happy gas or laughing gas because due to its intoxicating effect when inhaled next is which pass is known as the roof of the world so this is the shendur pass shendur top is often called roof of the world where the hindu kush pamir mountains and karakram range meets it is a flat plateau which can be only crossed between late april and early november it is more known to its famous chandur festival uh, trout streams and gradual grade so jo mashhoor hamari machli hai trout wo yahi se milti hai next is which celebrity was awarded pride of performance in 2005 to hum dekh sakte hain ki 2005 mein inam paane wale pakistan se ye log the humne in sab ke naam yaad rakhte hain so, uh, yahan pe jo right answer hai wo hai arif lohar option c 
आसिम उल हक कुरेशी ने स्पोर्ट्स में लिया है और आरिफ लोहार ने आर्ट्स में शबनम शकील ने भी आर्ट्स में और अरफा करीम ने भी आर्ट्स में ये प्राइड ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस जीता था 2005 में हेमिस फेयर इज वॉर्मर अकॉर्डिंग टू नदरन टू सदरन सदरन टू नॉर्थन और सेम रेट नीसो द ऑप्शन ए इज द राइट आंसर नदरन टू सदरन वेन वॉज कायद आजम फर्स्ट अपॉइंटेड एज थर्ड प्रेजिडेंसी मैजिस्ट्रेट इन बॉम्बे सो द राइट आंसर इज नाइनटीन हंड्रेड Next is T uh, Twenty World Cup Twenty Twenty will be held in which country? So the right answer is Australia. Australia will host the ICC Men's T Twenty World Cup in Twenty Twenty Two. ये भी याद रखना कि ये men's का होगा, not women's. Uh, the tournament comes less than a year since the very first World Cup in the UAE and Oman. There will be sixteen countries competing in Twenty Twenty Two with over forty five matches to be played on cricket grounds across Australia. नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हु इज द करंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ सिंध हाई कोर्ट सो फैसल अरबाब मुनीब अख्तर मजहर आलम नन ऑफ दीज नन ऑफ दीज इज द राइट आंसर द करंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ सिंध हाई कोर्ट इज मिस्टर जस्टिस अहमद अली एम शेख नेक्स्ट ये आपने डिटेल भी देख लेनी है इसमें से कोई भी क्वेश्चन बन के आ सकता है चलिए हम देख लेते हैं मिस्टर जस्टिस अहमद अली एम शेख वॉज बॉर्न ऑन थर्ड अक्टूबर ही अर्न हिज अर्ली एजुकेशन फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट पायलट स्कूल लाड़काना एंड ग्रेजुएटेड इन साइंस फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज डिग्री कॉलेज लाड़काना ही रीड फॉर अ लॉ डिग्री फ्रॉम शाह अब्दुल लतीफ यूनिवर्सिटी खैरपुर ऑन फर्स्ट नवंबर 1990 ही वाज एनरोल्ड एज एन एडवोकेट ऑफ सब ऑर्डिनेट कोर्ट वाइल ऑन मार्च 15, 1993 थ्री एज एन एडवोकेट हाई कोर्ट मिस्टर जस्टिस अहमद अली एम शेख मेंटेन्ड विद अबिलिटी हिज लीडिंग पोजीशन एट द बार नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज चार्ज दो आब लाइज बिटवीन विच अच्छा ये मजे के क्वेश्चन है टू रिवर्स चर्ज देखिए ये दोनों दरियाओं के नाम से मिला के बना है चर्ज सी एच ए चनाब से और जे जहलम से तो हमें इसके नाम से ही पता लग रहा है कि चनाब और जहलम के दरमियान में जो एरिया है उसको चज दो आप कहते हैं इस डायग्राम में हम देख सकते हैं जो रेड जगह है वो जहलम और चनाब के दरमियान है और वो चज दो आप है इस तरह दूसरे दो आप जो है वो भी याद रखने हैं बारी दो आप किसके दरमियान में है और इसी तरह रचना दो आप किसके दरमियान में है और सिंध सागर दो आप किसके दरमियान में है सिंध सागर दो आप जो है वो वो जहलम और सिंध के दरमियान में है इंडस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हु इज द करंट सेक्रेटरी जनरल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ इस्लामिक कॉपरेशन सो ये है इनमें से नन ऑफ दीज है और ये है मिस्टर हुसैन इब्राहिम ताहा ये अभी 19 दिसंबर को पाकिस्तान में जो हमारा गैर मामूली ओ आई सी का इजलास हुआ इस्लामाबाद में ये उसमें भी हम भी आए थे तो हमें इनका अच्छी तरह से याद हो गया है याद रख लेना है कि इनकी नेशनल चैडियन है और ये अपॉइंट हुए हैं अभी अभी रिसेंटली नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वट इज द शेयर ऑफ फोर फॉरेस्ट कवर्ड एरिया ऑफ द टोटल जियोग्राफिकल एरिया ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो द राइट आंसर इज थर्टी वन परसेंट डी नन ऑफ दीज थर्टी वन परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल लैंड एरिया नेक्स्ट इज द फोकल पॉइंट ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज यू एंड ह्यूमन राइट काउंसिल बी इज द राइट आंसर डॉक्टर आरिफ अलवी इज द डैश प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान सो ही इज द थर्टीन प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इस्लामिक रिपब्लिक ऑफ पाकिस्तान So the A is the right answer. Next is the first even nuclear bomb was detonated in New Mexico. हम देख लेते हैं कि कब कहाँ पे हुआ था Trinity site जहाँ पे ये हुआ था उसको Trinity site रख कहते हैं ये नाम याद रखना है. The world's first nuclear explosion occurred on July 16, 1945 when a when a plutonium implosion device was tested at a site located to 10 miles south of Los. Alamos, New Mexico. So the right answer is C. New Mexico on the barren plains of the uh, Alamogordo bombing range, known as the known as the Jornada de Merido. Next question is who was the last ruler of Lodi dynasty? So Bahlol Lodi, Ibrahim Lodi, Akbar Lodi. Right answer is Ibrahim Lodi. ये याद रखना है कि first जो था वो Bahlol Lodi था और last जो था वो Ibrahim Lodi था. नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज नेम द एसिड विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द स्टिंग ऑफ आर्ट सो दिस इज फॉर्मिक एसिड ऑप्शन बी नेक्स्ट इज इन द इन द इंटीरियम गवर्नमेंट ऑफ 1946 द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस वाज वाज लीड अंडर लियाकत अली खान लियाकत अली खान को जो है वो फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर बनाया गया था और इसी तरह अब्दुल रब निश्तर को डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पोस्ट एंड एयर का और इब्राहिम इस्माइल चंद्रीगर को डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स का हेड बनाया गया था और लाख इस तरह आप देख सकते हैं नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है व्हेन वाज लियाकत नेहरू पैक्ट बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान साइंस तो दिस इज 
फिफ्टी नन ऑफ दिस इज द राइट ऑप्शन दहली पैक्ट भी इसको कहते हैं इसका दूसरा नाम हमने याद रखना है दहली पैक्ट आल्सो कॉल्ड नेहरू लियाकत पैक्ट मेड ऑन अप्रैल एट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फॉलोइंग द एस्केलेशन ऑफ टेंशन बिटवीन इंडियन पाकिस्तान एंड ईस्ट पाकिस्तान जो कि अब बांग्लादेश है नेक्स्ट इज अ वट इज द ओल्ड नेम ऑफ म्यांमार सो हम इसके देख लेते हैं कि राइट आंसर इज बर्मा द ऑफिशियल इंग्लिश नेम वॉज चेंज बाय द कंट्रीज गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम द यूनियन ऑफ बर्मा टू द यूनियन ऑफ म्यांमार इन नाइनटीन एटी नाइन एंड स्टिल लेटर टू द रिपब्लिक ऑफ द यूनियन ऑफ म्यांमार अब इन शाला अगली वीडियो भी जिसमें एटी सब्जेक्ट रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन होंगे यानी कि सोलॉजी के और ट्वेंटी जनरल नॉलेज के जो कि हम पास्ट पेपर से लेंगे सो इस तरह हमारी तैयारी हो जाएगी हमारे साथ रहिए अल्लाह हाफिज